Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, that he, may, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. In order for your mind to get cleansed, because you got dirt in your mind, you got gook in your mind. That's what's in there. You got fighting over a basketball somewhere in the, in the recesses of your mind. That's in your mind. You got slap boxing in your mind. These things is in your mind. You think these things are okay. So when you come in the truth, you got to learn over time. Yo, that ain't all right. It ain't okay to fight over basketball. It ain't okay to have hatred. It ain't okay to uh, uh, to neglect and, and, and do the silent treatment for you sisters. These different things you got to learn. You got to learn how to deal with each other. But it takes the word of God to start that process. Warm, gotta pick a side. Pick a side. Who am I? Hey, Shalom family, most high in Christ. Bless Officer JDL to my right. Also nice. All praise to the most high. Um, so, topic for this class is leaders need leaders. Leaders need leaders. Um, one thing I, I, I'm noticing amongst uh, a lot of men is they get put in a position of leadership, right? Um, and when they come in, there's this mindset of I don't, I no longer need help. I no longer need guidance, right? I no longer need anyone to build me up as a leader. Right, I can figure these things out now, and there's a, there's a um there's an extent to which that is true, right? Like there's certain just basic things you should know over time as a leader, but you're always gonna need guidance, right? You're gonna need someone to help move you in the proper direction, right? Or, or point you in the proper direction. Let me say it that way, uh, and give you clarity and counsel on what to do and what not to do in certain situations. Even when you look at the the scriptures and we look at like uh, great men such as Solomon. They had leaders around them, right? That helped them to uh, make proper, helped him to make proper decisions. Uh, when we look at Christ, we're going to examine that. Did he have leaders around him? We're going to look at um, uh, uh, some other examples throughout the scriptures today and see: Did these men need leaders, or did they just operate on their own with no connection to the Lord, with no connection to any other spirits that could help guide them and how to behave and how to think? So we're going to start Second Peter, Second uh, Peter chapter three and verse one. I mean, we'd be adding S's to the scriptures, Second Peter's, and there's no S. But Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 1, that's where I like to start. Let's get it. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and by which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So the purpose of Peter's letter was to stir up the people's minds. Right. To allow them to reflect. You got to think when he's sending this letter out, there's fathers, there's there's mothers. And when we deal with the topic today, everyone is a leader in some way in the nation of Israel. If you're a child, right, if you're a child and you're hearing this one that you may have to lead your peers. But also when you grow up, you're going to have to lead families. Right. As a mother, you lead the children. You may lead other sisters as a senior sister in the sense of you provide an example to them. And you provide guidance to them. Right. Then. As men, we lead, a, we lead a nation, and there's obviously order and rank and structure in terms of how we lead. So when Peter was writing this letter, you can also understand that he's influencing leaders, right? As a nation, the Lord gave us that responsibility to be the leading superpower on how everyone else moves, how everyone else thinks, how everyone else uh, uh, conducts themselves and even handles the earth. We had that level of responsibility as a nation, right? Go ahead. Knowing the f this first. That there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. So in the last days, there's people that instead of walking with the rule book that we've been given by the Lord, they walk after their own lust. So Peter was always trying to put the people back in the mindset to think about what they were doing and the actions they were taking. Because when you're a leader, you have great responsibility. You got the responsibility of taking care of souls in different ways, right? You could allow things that spread evil, right? You could allow things that... Uh, uh, create a dynamic where now it's irreversible. 
these these things were what he wanted to prevent from happening ever again in the nation of Israel. So he understood people were going to speak things contrary to what the Bible said. He had to put the people in remembrance, right? Just like we're looking at today in these last days. There's people that are going to speak contrary to the Bible, despite the fact that you need to lead them. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's how many people will tell you. They'll tell you, oh, everything is going, business as usual. Everything is moving the same way it's always been. They'll discourage you through the mindset that they have not to apply the laws of God. And that's the reason leaders need to exist. Leaders got to exist because if not, everybody would, if there was no Peter to put the people back in remembrance, then the people might have fallen asleep. So the Lord always rose up leaders and men that could guide the people to repentance, to show them, hey, this is the direction you should go in. This is how you should be thinking. This is how you should be moving in said situation. So it's necessary, right? So give me a second uh, Peter 1, t chapter 2 and verse 1. Watch this now. Jump over chapter 2, verse 1. You ain't even got to flip the page. Actually, 1 Peter 2 and 2, 2 and 1. 1 Peter 2 and 1. Yeah, that's what I want. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. My glasses is coming, man. Sheesh. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So when we come into truth, we got malice on us. We got guile, right? Let's look up the word guile real quick. Malice is you do things with ill intent. I want to look up a definition for guile because I want it to be crystal clear what it's referring to, right? Guile might be on you. You might have this spirit. Let's look it up. Let's go with uh, definition two, the obsolete one. Or oh, we could go with the first one. It, it works. We go with both. We read them both. Guile, uh, deceitful, cunning, duplicity. Meaning you say one thing, you do another thing. So you fill with trickery. Like, think about it. Think, Yeah, you double tongue. That's perfect. Think about it, right? When you was doing your resume, you always put a little extra on it. You lied. <laughs> right? You lied. Whenever you was trying to uh, uh, get with that, that, that woman in the world, you was lying. You, you know, I got this, this, and that. You lying. You don't really got all that. But you, you added some extra. When you was trying to... Um, when you was trying to uh, uh, make any progress in life, most of the time it was filled with deceit and trickery. It wasn't honesty. You wasn't coming in there like, look, when you hire me, I'm really not going to work after 3 p.m. I'm going to be looking at the clock because I'm trying to clock out. You ain't say that. You said, I'm an excellent worker, and if you hire me, I I'm going to bring greatness to your company. And then you got the job, and you was trying to find a place to hide about 3.30, right? Because you was lying. You was filled with deceit. These are the spirits that we had in us. Right? When we come in into the truth, right? We fill with guile, right? So go back. Yeah, read the scripture. I wanted, I wanted the second definition, but he took it down at this point, so keep going. Okay. Verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies. And what? And, and hypocrisies. Hypocrisy, right? Go ahead. And envies. And envies. That's important, right? Because when we're talking about leaders needed leaders, sometimes you feel like you don't need a leader because of envy. But when you came in here, you was a newborn babe, right? That's what we're getting into. You got to acknowledge, you know, I got an envious spirit. An envious spirit. Many people, right, and, and especially in, that grew up in poverty, you decided you wanted to be a rapper or a drug dealer or a ball player based upon envy. It wasn't based upon you loving the game. That's not why you said, I'm going to pick up a ball. You said, yo, hold on, wait, they like Kobe like that? Wait a second. If they like Kobe like that, imagine how much they'll love me. Dang, they like that drug dealer like that? When you pull up in that, I'm going to go get me one of those. It was envy that motivated you. That was your motivating factor. It was power. It was all these lust that caused you to do what you was doing. That's why you moved. You, if, if, if it, a lot of dudes, if it wasn't for women, you wouldn't do nothing. You'd be laying on your back. You wouldn't go to work. You wouldn't wash your behind. You wouldn't, that's how men is in the world. That's how a lot of men is in the world. They move for women. Because they're envious. They see the next dude with all the women. They're like, hold on, wait. I could do something better than that. Because of envy. Go ahead. And all evil speakings. And evil speakings. Gossiping, murmuring, saying wickedness, saying you was going to kill this, you going to shoot that. You was rapping it. Shoot him up, bang, bang. I'm smoking on that uh, whatever pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. My booty hole brown and yeah, that thing, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Man, look, man, they, the Lord going to hit it on the forehead. 
with a new. You know, she could repent, though. Repent. Repent. You know what I mean? You could go from ratchet to righteous. All right. Uh, reverse 2 now. So when we come in here, we understand that we got these spirits on us. Right? Verse 2 now. As new more babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That ye may grow thereby. So when we come in, we acknowledge we newborn babies and we got all types of issues. All of us when we came in was like, man, I got a problem with smoking. I got a problem with drinking. I got a problem with adultery. I'm eating pork. I, I'm not disciplined. I, my household's out of order. You, you had to acknowledge something to be walking through these doors. Right? You acknowledged it. But now, if you look at yourself, you may have been here four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even 12 years. You're still a child. Right? They don't, they don't even call you a teenager at 12. You a teenager at 13. So if you ain't been in, if you not, a lot of us is not teenagers. We children. We babies. We little kids. Your parents wouldn't leave you in the house alone unless they had to work. Right? They wouldn't. They wouldn't give you responsibility over anything. But you in a position of leadership. And for some reason you say, yo, I'm, I'm in this position. I'm a 10. I'm a 20. I'm a all of a sudden, whatever, 50, you know what I mean? Like, I, in my mind, I got it now. But you a baby. Imagine if baby said, we taking over the house. Imagine if baby said, yo, we, yo, parents, you go lay down. I'm not going to ask you for no advice. We running the house today. Th there, would be a, there would be an increase in fires. Right? That's what happened. People would be dying left and right if babies took over. First Corinthians 3 and verse 1. I, I'm I'm saying that to set us in a mindset of we're children when we come in the truth. So you might be a leader. You might have a position of leadership. You might even be a senior sister where you, you help counsel some of the uh, the new assistants. But the title is Leaders Need Leaders. Leaders Need Leaders. When you came in here, you had a leader because you acknowledged you were a baby, right? 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. You see how he had to speak to them? He had to speak to them carnal because he couldn't give them a spiritual understanding of this thing because they had a mindset, right, of a baby. He couldn't go deep. He said, I'm going to just go, I'm going to go service level. That's how a lot of us are. We don't understand deep. We think we understand deep things because it come out during Sabbath class. But as soon as that Sabbath class turn over and you look at your notes and you got to explain it, you're like, huh? I can't really put that together the same way. You might be able to repeat it, but true understanding comes when you can repeat things in your own words. When you've lived it, when you have the wisdom, right, to know when to apply that and when not to apply that. And then when you have the understanding to say, okay, this is why I did that. This is why this made sense in this situation. You might know to break, but you don't really understand how the brake system works. You just know I press this thing right here, this paddle, and the car going to stop. And if it don't stop, you're going to have no understanding why you hit that pole. Obviously, it was the Lord, right, first and foremost. But the second thing you would consider is, I don't really understand the brake system. I'm going to have to go get this looked at by somebody with understanding, a mechanic. So we understand these things on a carnal level, but on a spiritual level, we don't get it. That's why I had to use these, I use these analogies because people don't get it on a, on a spiritual level. And we're going to read in the Bible that there were men that did. Right? There were men that understanding what they needed on a spiritual level. Keep reading. We're going to read the verse 3. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. I fed you with basics. I gave you basics of the law. Right? Because up to this point, you were not able to get a deep understanding of what was coming out of the scriptures. Read. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. At this current moment, you still carnal. If you're a leader and you think you don't need leaders, you don't call your officer above you, you don't reach out and ask questions, right? You don't look for no guidance. You're carnal. You're carnal. Let's take it in the carnal sense then, right? Because this is what carnal people understand. When you go to work and you come up against a problem, typically if there's no handbook that shows you what to do or no prior procedure, you ask for advice. That's just natural. You would say, hey, I'm running against this problem. Boss, manager, supervisor, lead. What do I do? How should I navigate the situation? This is what I think I should do, but what do you think I should do? And when you don't get an answer, you say, hold on, wait. How can I act on this without damaging anything and still ask tomorrow? I don't want to be completely stagnant, 
Maybe I work on my plan a little bit more. Maybe I uh, uh, consider different options. But you don't go and press the bread button and say, ooh, what is it going to do? You don't do that at work. But in the truth, you move without counsel and you make decisions. Shalom. Hey, bro. Hey, sis. You've been watching for a whole 15 minutes. You still ain't subscribed yet? Go ahead and hit that button down at the bottom of the page. All right, I'm going to shove my black lips. You get back to the class. Most high Christ bless. And when you're a leader in the truth, you got to understand men's souls, women's souls, children's souls are in your hand as a leader. Right? So we got to be very mindful when we move with this like a baby with a sports car. Right? That's how we move with it. We move like a baby with a sports car. We don't understand the level of responsibility it is to be a senior sister, right? To be called a big sister, to be called an officer of 10, to even be called a soldier, right? To be called a 20, a 50, all these different ranks. That means you're responsible for souls of people. And if, if you are really a leader, you understand, in order for you to even get to the place you are, it took leaders. So why does that stop at some point? You didn't get to where you was at without getting led by somebody to that point. You saw a video with a bishop or a captain or a deacon teaching, and you say, you know what? I need to go there so I can be led. And then you got there and said, I don't need them no more. It makes no sense to me. Read that. It's like applying for the job with your boss and saying, I got it from here, boss. I got it from here. I don't need you. I'm going to do your job now. Read that. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and yeah. walk as men? There's envy and strife and divisions amongst them because they were fighting about who was their teacher, right? Who, who showed them? Who was the smartest, essentially, was the battle. And that's what happens when you start, when you a baby. Babies start arguing about foolishness. I watch my sons, they argue over nonsense. You know, who got the marker first? Who got the paper first? I was sitting right here before he sat here. That's how babies are. Children argue over foolishness. Don't ask each other for advice. Instead of helping each other, they against each other for petty nonsense. John chapter 3 and verse 3. So coming in this truth, we got to understand that's how we were. We are gr we're grown people with this, with this mindset to battle each other over foolishness. Over foolishness. We battled over who could put a ball in a hoop. It's ridiculous. We talk, Fights happen because somebody put a ball in a hole better than another brother. Let's put that in perspective. It's ridiculous what we really think about what we're doing. People have died over a ball getting thrown into a hole. And now you're getting the truth, and you're a genius. You don't need nobody no more. You was fighting over who could catch a football. Yo, I catch better than you, bro. Uh, watch, I'm going to run my route. I'm going I'm to break you. I'm a, I am play D. I break. Uh, see, I caught it. Fight me. What? Now you're in the truth. And you learn five scriptures, and you say, I don't, I don't need no leaders no more. I'm good. I'm straight, baby. I know the laws of God. Why do I need you to counsel me? I know I was fighting over a football three weeks ago, three years ago, ten years ago, but I don't need you no more. I got it. John chapter 3 and verse 3. We got to humble ourselves. The book of John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Christ told a grown man, Nicodemus, a ruler, a leader. He told a leader, you got to be born again. You got to start over like a baby in the spirit. You can't come into this with the understanding that you know everything that's going on. You got to be like a baby. You got to be born again. Go ahead. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He carnal. He said, well, I'm going to go back in my mother. I'm old. Besides, my mother ain't that big. He carnal. He ain't taking in what Christ is actually saying to him. Go ahead. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Of water. Let's get the water. Unless a man be born of water, right? A man got to be born of water. He got to start over like a baby based upon this water. Not say I'm a grown ass man. That is not being born again. When you got that mindset, you're not a grown man. If you've been here for a year, two years, three years, four years, so on, that's how long, that's how old you are in the truth. And the water is what started that rebirth process. Read that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. 
that he may that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. In order for your mind to get cleansed, because you got dirt in your mind, you got gook in your mind. That's what's in there. You got fighting over a basketball somewhere in the in the recesses of your mind. That's in your mind. You got slap boxing in your mind. These things is in your mind. You think these things are okay. So when you come to the truth, you got to learn over time. Yo, that ain't all right. It ain't okay to fight over basketball. It ain't okay to have hatred. It ain't okay to uh, uh, to neglect and, and, and do the silent treatment for you sisters. These different things you got to learn. You got to learn how to deal with each other. But it takes the word of God to start that process. So the water and what else? John. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Let's get the Spirit now. We have to change our mind, right? Cleanse our minds. And we have to what? Ultimately, change our spirit. This is a spiritual process that you're going through. But when you carnal, you look at this and say, well, I got a title now, so I don't need to change my spirit. So what's the spirit referring to? Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. So your age does not dictate where you are in the spirit. You have experience, right? You have experience, and that experience can now be filtered through the scriptures, but your age doesn't dictate where you are in the spirit. You have to grow your spirit, just like everybody that came in before you, because guess what? You have more carnal things in your head than righteous things. You got more tendency to revert back to carnality than you do to revert back to spiritual things. The majority of your life has been spent being carnal and moving based upon your flesh. So it takes a level of humility to walk through the door and start that process of being born again. Jump back to John 3 and verse 5. That's what we got to all do. We got to go through this process. So in going through that process, right, we're learning how we should think, how we should move, when to get counsel, when not to get counsel. When you come through the doors first, you get counsel for everything because you don't even know where to get fringes at. You're like, where, where do I get fringes at? They're like, what? Silly, silly Israelite. We'll, we'll fringe it for you. You could go to Joanne's. That ain't hard. How do I keep the Sabbath? What am I going to eat on the Sabbath? I remember that was a question for real. Brother's like, yo, what, yo, what am I going to eat on the Sabbath? You telling me I got to not cook? What am I going to eat? Now you got all types of meal selections because over time, through counsel, you started to develop that up. Now when somebody else asks the question, you look at them crazy like, <laughs> silly Israelite. There's a million meals you can eat. Now it's funny to you to hear that question. But it took a level of humility for you to ask and get built up in that little area that we're talking about. You had to be born again and learn that. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 5. Because if it was up for, up to Judah, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on, y'all. Go ahead. Read the scripture. I'm going to leave it alone. Ah, I can't leave it alone. If it was up to Judah, we eat fried chicken every Sabbath. <laughs> I, I see him brothers go to camp, and they ask, who like cold fried chicken? And br everybody raised their hand. I said, cold fried chicken on the Sabbath? Go ahead. Go read the script. Judah said cold fried chicken is the business on the Sabbath. It was a multitude. It was in a multitude of counselors. Go ahead. Read that. The book of That's John. what I saw. Shout out to Sack. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 3, and verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So unless you go through this conversion process of starting again, you ain't going to the kingdom of heaven. So think about that. The Lord is telling a grown man, right? If anybody wants to say I'm a grown-ass man, Nicodemus could have said it. He was a ruler of the Jews. He didn't have, like, Negro power like you got. You the ruler of the McDonald's. Most of us ain't managers. Most of us ain't in positions of power even at work or in society. He was a ruler of the Jews, and he said, yo, you got to be like a little baby, bro. You got to start over. This is how I read it. I read it like Christ was kicking game to him. Look, I, look, I don't care what your status is. I don't care what you feel like you know. You got to be like a little baby to get in the kingdom of heaven. Think about saying that to, to them Obama. Obama pull up to you like, yo, Obama, I know you ran the country, but I don't care. You got to be like a little baby to get into this kingdom of heaven. That's how Christ was talking to him, and he accepted it. Right when you read, later Nicodemus was there when Christ, after Christ passed. So he accepted it. He came to him by night and learned. So the point I'm making to you all is what? 
He had to change. He had to convert his mindset. He became like a baby. And that's what we all got to do coming into the truth. Read verse 6 now. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You being born in the spirit is a whole different thing. I know you got years. And I know you got carnal wisdom. But when you come in and you got to learn again. You might think you know how to lead. You might think you understand what it is you're doing here in the body. But we don't really understand what we're here for. It's grow if if every year, every couple months, every day, pretty much, the whole my whole mind says shift. I'm like, dang, I don't I, I thought I knew that. I don't know that. I thought I knew that. I didn't know that. I thought I understood this. I don't understood this. It's because you're growing. Just like when you was a child. You thought you understood certain things. But now you understand them a completely different way. When you was playing sports, right, because I got to use carnal things so it makes sense to you, or you was doing things in, as a child, you was kind of just going through the motions, and you thought you had tapped the, the, the best ability that you had. And then when you get older and you start to understand things like for basketball, for an example, you understand footwork and the need for it and how important it is, you're like, dang, nobody ever told me work on my footwork all day. I didn't understand how important that was. Like I knew it was a big part of the game. But now I get like it's the main thing is if I can understand footwork. But coaches wasn't teaching that. They was worried about who jump high, who run faster. So that's where your brain was at. I'm using that to say what? There's things that as you get older and you start to study them more, you look at them more, you go, dang, there's, there's, there's a whole aspect to this that I was missing. So you don't think that's going to happen in the spirit too? That's happening in the spirit. So when you're born of the spirit, there's growth that's going to need to take place. Read verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The, w the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So we can't tell who's going to be born of the Spirit. But every time we teach, there's people being born of the Spirit. Many people coming in through Clubhouse, right? Many people coming in through street teaching, through videos on YouTube, through flyers. They're being born of the Spirit. And the process is a one of conversion, of changing your mindset and being like a baby, right? So in that, give me Psalms 143 and verse 5. We're going to get these videos. I want the two videos, right? Psalms 143 and verse 5. When you think about a child and how they learn, it's important to take that into consideration here, right? One thing that a baby does, right, is not – a baby don't just – uh, if babies just got up and started doing stuff, I'm telling you, you will lose your mind. If your if you're six-month-old just say, yo, I'm finna go in the kitchen and figure out this sandwich, you'd be like, what? A baby don't do that. A baby goes through a process to learn. And there's one key thing that leaders need to take it into account, right, that babies do, right? So we're going to look at this. You can go ahead and hit play, y'all, if y'all got it. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. Read Hold on, wait. Before y'all hit play, Psalms 143, verse 5. Yes, sir, I do want the scripture first. Thank you. They pulled it up on the screen. I got distracted. Squirrel. Go ahead. Read that. The book of Psalm, chapter 143 and verse 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. So when it says I muse on the works of thy hands, it means I look at those things and I think deeply upon them. And I, and I want to copy it. I want to be as great as you are. Right? I'm looking at these things to say how should I move and what level of greatness should I, should I excel to. The Lord may err. We can't see air, but it's in our body. We need it to survive. If it had, if it was uh, 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 just made up a little bit different, the entire thing could be set on fire. The Lord made trees that when we breathe out CO2, those trees take in that CO2 and then give us back oxygen. Like these are things when you really sit down and think about it, like, yo, my brain can't even, I would never even think to do that. We would just be breathing air and we would keep breathing air and spitting out CO2 and we would die if it was up to a Negro. Negro don't got the, the depth of brain power to think about sustainability until you see it and what the Lord is creating. You go, dang, the Lord create things in cycles. The sun go in a cycle. The moon go in a cycle. The water go in a cycle. You go, dang, the Lord is great. Maybe I should create things in cycles. Maybe I should create things with sustainability. So if you're thinking, if you're a thinking man and you're musing upon the works of the Lord, you start to mimic and copy the patterns of the Lord and your actions. That's what the law is teaching us, how to move like the Lord moves. Read Psalms 82 and verse 6 real quick, and then we're going to look at this. In order to be a God, 
You must examine the work of God. That's ultimately what that scripture, you can't become a God or become a leader without examining the work of leaders. And babies understand that. Right? Read that. Psalms 82 and 6, and we're going to watch the video. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. When you mimic the wickedness of the world, you're going to fall like men and die like one of the princes. But when you mimic the work of leaders, you'll become one. Because you'll look at them, you'll start to say, why do they think like that? Why do they move like that? Why are they doing the things that they do? That's what David was doing. He was looking at the greatest leader in the universe and saying, look at all he created. Look at all he thought of. Look at, look at the way he's moving. And that's what the Lord is trying to bring us back to, right? So hit play. Let's look at how babies learn. We got two videos. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. The Lord wasn't asking it. It's a commandment. He said, gather yourselves together. Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. The Lord said in the last days, he commands us to gather together. He said we are a nation not desired. Read that for, top part one more time. Gather yourselves together. Wait a second. You. You sitting on the couch. You're sitting at home. The end time's passing you by. And you ain't been to the school yet. Come on now, dog. You ain't here, Boozy. What Boozy just said? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's time for you to get down here, man. It's a shame, bro. What the hell? Come on, man. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah, yeah. Look. Come down to the school, 7254 University Avenue, La Mesa, California. Come keep God's commandments. What you waiting on? And if you're looking for a school in your area, visit israelunite.org slash contact us and find a school closest to you. Shalom. <laughs> fundamental learning mechanism for young children before they have language. When they're two and three and four years old, we can communicate to our children through a verbal sense. We can talk to them. But when they're, you know, zero to 15 months of age, we're not so much using spoken language as using a language of gestures. And they're reading our language of gestures very, very carefully. One of the things that parents notice, and we study in the lab, is that children learn many of the skills so the devil they got babies in a lab objects by simply watching adults and imitating them so one of your child's favorite playthings might be mother's lipstick they see that mom goes into her purse and opens up her lipstick and puts it on her lips and they think that's a very valuable object that lipstick tube and they want to be like mom they want to imitate mom and they play with the lipstick they play with keys for the same reason, and even our cell phones for that reason. They're imitating us. So they're learning skills by uh, watching what adults do, but they also learn about social inter interaction and customs and the sort of the way we behave around here, the way we behave in this culture or the way we behave in this family. They're taking information all the time and imitating and using imitation as a fundamental mechanism for learning before there's language. Before you play the other one, give me Psalm 62 and verse 5. So a baby has the humility and the mindset to say, I'm going to learn culture from observing and mimicking. Okay, I see this person got fringes that look like that. I'm going to go get me something that look like that. I see this brother carries this like that. I'm going to do that like that. Okay, I see. Okay, my. Okay, they shalom. How they do the okay, they do the shalom like that. You mimic when you come in here. You watch brothers, you like, I don't know how to shalom. Yeah, okay, I seen them do it twice. Okay, I'm a mimic. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try that like that. But now you start to learn something, you go, I don't need to mimic no more. I know what I'm doing. It's that pride that jump upon you. We're gonna deal with it, right? Psalm sixty two and verse five, but we're gonna watch the next video. The book of Psalm, chapter sixty two, verse five. My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. So the expectation is from the Lord on what you should be doing. Because what? When you observe the Lord, right, and in your mind you understand how the Lord operates, then you set your expectations based upon what you've seen of the Lord, what you see in his society and in his culture and what the leaders before you have set in place. But when you got a wicked mind, a mind that's puffed up, right, a mind where you don't need leaders, you're going to start doing whatever you want to do. So we're going to watch another baby video, right, because – we got to understand, we got to be like these babies. These babies got more sense than us to say, let me mimic 
leaders. Clearly my mom is a leader. I came out of her. Clearly my father is a leader. Let me mimic them. They playing with the keys. I should play with keys. They got a phone. Let me play with the phone. They got lipstick. I guess I'm going to pick up the lipstick. This must all mean something. Let me follow after them until I learn what it means. A baby is smart enough to do that. But when we come in the truth, you think I'm a grown man, so I don't got to mimic nobody. I'm going to move like how I move. And that's going to be a destruction. Right? That's going to be a destruction. Go ahead. Hit play. So the point here is what? A baby learns through imitation. They learn through looking at their parent, right? And then they create a relationship with, okay, now I understand what I need to do based upon how my parent moves. I'm not going to make it up. So that's why the Lord gave you leaders in the spirit. So you can look at those leaders and say, okay, this is how the leader moves. This is how I need to move. I need to imitate that behavior. That is the way and the path forward to righteousness. I'm not going to leave you without a leader, without a man to follow on earth. Right? What's that uh, scripture in Numbers? I think it's number 27 and 17. Let me see that. The Lord understood this, right? And in all his works, he understands that, man. It's, 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 there's always leaders, right, it's, uh, to go in before them, to come out. Numbers 27, I think it's 17. Go ahead. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 17. Go ahead. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So there was a man set over the congregation, right? A leader was set over the congregation for what? Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them. Which may go out before them, which means they were in a position of leadership. Which may go in before them, which means they were the first ones in the room, right? Or the first ones in wherever they were going, so they were in a position of leadership. Go ahead. And which may lead them out. Which may lead them out. Leadership. Which may lead them. Go ahead. And which may bring them in. Which may bring them in. Meaning they're already there and they're telling them to come in. They were there first. They led them. They're instructing them. They're guiding them. He said there needs to be a man over the congregation to lead the people. That's what Moses asked the Lord to put in place. Put a leader in place. They need it. Go ahead. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So that they don't be like sheep with no shepherd. So as a, as a repenting Israelite, you need leaders. Moses was much wiser than any of us. And he understood that if they don't have a leader, they're not going to move right. So leaders need leaders. But somewhere along the line, give me Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. Right? Despite what this says, we're going to read 1 to 9, and then we go on to 1 Corinthians 8. Let's read Proverbs 4 first. Somewhere along the line, we, we, we see things like Proverbs chapter 4, and we start to say, I'm good. I don't, I don't need what we're about to read. Go ahead. Read Proverbs 4 and 1. Watch. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father. When you come in, you a child, right? We read that. So a child needs instruction of a father. You need spiritual fathers to guide you. You need instruction. You need guidance on well, this is the right way to move. This is the wrong way to move. You need someone to show you that path. Go ahead. And attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Go ahead. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also. He did what? He taught me also. Go ahead. And said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. 
keep my commandments and live. These are the things that you're being taught. Come to life. Keep the laws of God. So you get leaders over you to show you these things. You get spiritual fathers to show you these things. Go ahead. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Keep going. We're going to nine. Wisdom is the principal oh, thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So the key thing for us to do with all our getting is to get understanding. We're supposed to get wisdom, knowing how to apply the laws in our life, and then understanding why are we actually doing that. Why am I doing that in this moment? We're supposed to understand what it is we're doing being an Israelite. Many of us think we got knowledge, think we got, think we got wisdom, let me say it that way, or understanding, because you know where a precept is in the Bible. You don't have wisdom. You don't even know when to apply that law that you just read. These are the questions that we should be asking because, again, a baby is not – a baby knows that those are keys. They have the knowledge of keys. They don't have the wisdom on when to use those keys. And more, more so, they don't have the understanding on how those keys work and function. They don't know what a push start is, but you think because you know where the key's at, you know what a push start is. See, it, it's, it's, it's foolishness that goes on in a child. The scriptures tell you foolishness is born in the, in the heart of a child. And when we repent, we got foolishness in us that needs to be cleaned out. So we need leaders to guide us, regardless of where you're at, in terms of rank or position. Go ahead. Verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. So give me uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1 now. So the goal is for you to get that wisdom, get that understanding. But somewhere, right, somewhere along the line, this is, what's ha this is what happens. There's a break because it told you to get knowledge. It told you to get wisdom and understanding. Knowledge is just knowing where the scripture is at. Wisdom is knowing how to apply it. And understanding is knowing why you applied it. A lot of us lack understanding. We don't got no understanding. We know where the law is at, and we might know how to apply it a little bit. But we don't know why we're doing it really yet. We don't really know why we're doing it yet. We like The scriptures might tell us, but we can't really uh, 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 articulate it to anybody. We can't explain to anybody, here's the understanding on this. Because we needed men over us to give us the understanding. Now we're applying it. We're saying, okay, I'm starting to get it now. And then over time, you develop understanding. And it might take years for you to develop the understanding that you need. But a lot of us, we get caught up at step one, which is getting knowledge. 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. Now it's touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. See, many men, they get knowledge, and then they puffed up. You get a rank, you say, yo, I passed that test. And now it's competition. Going back to what we read, go to 1 Peter 2 and 1. We read about that spirit. The knowledge will puff you up. And now you got scriptures, but you're still dealing with envy. You're still dealing with a spirit of competition. Instead of saying, I need a leader to lead me, you're competing with him. You're like, yo, I'm going to be able to break stuff down better than him. You're not saying, well, he probably got wisdom that I don't have. Let me ask him. Let me get some guidance from him. Let me get some understanding from him. Instead, you say, I know it already. And because I know it already, I don't need him. I could do it better than him. I could do it better than her. Read that. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. And envies. So it's still in you because you are babe. You haven't cleansed it all the way out, but you have a position of leadership. And so in your mind as a leader, you don't need guidance. You don't need no one to help you out, right? And so that starts to destroy you. Starts to put in your brain that you know what you're doing and you know how to move. Jump back 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. Now it's touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all, all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. See, a man of wisdom would say, I don't really know anything, so therefore I need a leader. I need counsel. I need guidance. I need second opinions on this. But a foolish man, the one that's puffed up, goes, I can make this decision without asking anybody for help. I can make the decision 
based upon these one or two precepts that I understand about this situation. I can make this decision with no guidance. That's the foolish man. And a baby, that's exactly what a baby would do. A baby will say, yo, I know what to do. I put on my shoes and I go outside. I'm finna open the door and run outside. Then you go, where's the baby at? The baby's in the middle of the street because they, they thought it was time to go outside. Now they in traffic, about to die. And you chasing them down the street. Or a baby might just take off and run. They don't know about human trafficking. Baby ain't thinking about no human trafficking. They outside, they're like, we in the park. This is all the park. I'm finna run. Then they start running and you go, man, that ba- what the hell is wrong with this baby? But many of us do that spiritually. Spiritually, we run. We just take off. We don't say, hold on, let me stop and get help. Let me get guidance. Let me get a second opinion. And the way you know that you're puffed up is you start making command decisions, right? You stop asking for counsel. You know the scriptures say you're supposed to do, do nothing. Give, give me that in Sirach 37. You know the scriptures say, I think it's 37 and 16, right? You know the scriptures say that you're supposed to get counsel. You've heard that a million times on class. You got the knowledge of knowing that's a scripture in the Bible. But in the moment, you don't ask for it because you say, I can make this decision on my own. I'm a smart man. I'm a grown-ass man. Read that. The book of Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. You see what the scriptures say? It said, let counsel go before every action. But in your brain, you say, I don't need to follow that. I know what to do. That's the mindset of a baby. So the point, the point I'm making is you got to be able to assess, do I know what I'm doing in this specific situation? You don't even have wisdom to do that. It's better off you ask. It's better off you ask and get guidance and get counsel. Not because, hey, I, you know, I think I know because I know where the precepts are. I'm moving. And I'm not saying, again, you can't brush your teeth in the morning without asking for counsel. You can't uh, uh, pay, pay your bills without asking for counsel. But there's a lot of things that we have to really humble ourselves and realize we never move right with these things in our life. We've never known how to do. We, a lot of y'all don't know. We never know how to move with finances in our life. You never even thought about it. You live check to check your entire life. You still live in check to check because you don't get no counsel. You don't, you don't say, what are, the, what are the solutions for not living check to check? You still in a position where you're arguing with your wife every single day because you don't ask for counsel. Instead of saying, how do I prevent arguing with her every single day? You say, I got it. I'm a, I'm a man of the house. I'm finna go in there and just scream at her. That's not working. Go ahead, read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 21. Be not confident in a plain way. It means don't be confident just because you think it's a, it's a smooth path. Even in those circumstances, you're supposed to ask for counsel. Even in the circumstance where you think, hey, everything's going to go perfect, and I know exactly how it's going to go, and I know exactly the way I need to move, you still say, hey, man, just, just get a second opinion. What do you think? If, if, if I do this, you think that's going to work out? Somebody might point something out to you that you're not able to see. That's how the Lord work. The Lord put counsel around you to protect you from you. But you say, I don't want that because I got knowledge, and that knowledge done puffed you up. 